If a seismic event happens somewhere on the planet, how do we know if it's an earthquake or a nuclear bomb test? There's these devices called seismographs that measure vibrations in the earth and we've got them dotted all around the planet. So they can detect seismic waves like the shock waves coming from an earthquake or a nuclear bomb test. And we can distinguish between the two because they produce different types of shock wave. Earthquakes happen when tectonic plates move against each other. So you might have a tectonic plate here like this and another one here like this. And this one is slowly slipping underneath the first one. But it doesn't happen smoothly like that because of friction. So you've got pressure building up and building up and then suddenly there's a movement forwards and downwards like that. And that sends shockwaves down into the earth. Crucially, it sends two different types of shockwave. To explain the different types of waves, I'm gonna use a slinky. So here are the tectonic plates again. This one is gonna slide under this one and the slinky represents the earth immediately underneath the tectonic plate. So just to be clear, that way is downwards into the earth, that way is upwards. Like gravity is that way. Like there's like, you know, there's a person standing on the, you, you see what's going on. Right, so there's gonna be a sudden movement downwards and to the right of this tectonic plate like this. So there are two components to the wave that travels down the slinky. There's this component, the kind of straight down component, that's a compression wave, what we call in physics a longitudinal wave, and in seismology they call a P wave. You've also got the wave that comes from the side to side motion, that's that one, that's a shear wave, what in physics you would call a transverse wave, and in seismology they call an S wave. So you've got P waves and you've got S waves. Let's turn on its side so you can see it a bit more clearly. So earthquakes produce P waves and S waves, compression waves and shear waves. And crucially, they travel at different speeds. So P waves travel about five kilometers per second. S waves travel about three kilometers per second. So if I'm looking at my seismograph and I'm some distance away from the epicenter, the P waves are gonna arrive first and the S waves are gonna arrive sometime later. So I'm gonna see that as two separate events on my seismograph. What about nuclear bomb tests? Well, a nuclear bomb going off underground pushes everything outwards in all directions. It compresses in all directions. So you get compression waves in all directions. You don't get any shear waves. So you're only gonna see P waves, no S waves. So when you look at your seismograph, if you only see one event arriving, then it may well be a nuclear bomb test and it's probably not an earthquake. The other cool thing about PNS waves is you can use them to figure out where on the globe an earthquake happened. Like the further you are away from the epicenter, the greater the delay between when the P waves arrive and when the S waves arrive. That makes sense, right? Like if you're stood next to the epicenter, the PNS waves are going to arrive pretty much simultaneously, but the further away you are, the more time there is for that delay between the two to build up. And as a rule of thumb, for every second of delay between the P waves arriving and the S waves arriving, add eight kilometers to the distance between the seismograph and the epicenter. Um, if you wanna see why that's the case, um, here's a derivation on the screen. Uh, pause it now if you wanna look through it, but basically um, you start off with the two speeds, five kilometers per second, three kilometers per second, and then, and then you work through it. So how can you use this to figure out where an earthquake is? Well, suppose you've got a seismograph here in Brazil and you measure a delay between the arrival of P waves and the arrival of S waves of 10 minutes, 600 seconds. So multiply that by eight to get the number of kilometers. That's 4,800 kilometers. So it's uh, like, it's out here somewhere. Because it could equally be out there or up here or over there. There's a whole circle of possible places that are 4,800 kilometers away from that seismograph. 
a perfect circle. <laughs> um, so the earthquake is somewhere on that circle. We need another seismograph. So imagine we've got one here in the United States and that measures the earthquake as being uh, 4,000 kilometers away. So that's like this, got a nice big circle like that. Okay, so the earthquake is here or here, but which one is it? We need a third seismograph. So imagine we've got another one here and that measures a distance of like, so it's like um, out here somewhere, there's a whole circle of possibilities, which means it must be here. The earthquake is here. In reality, the error bars on these measurements are quite large and actually you use many more seismographs to hone down the exact location of the earthquake. But there you go, that's how you use PNS waves to locate an earthquake. I'm really interested in the science of how people learn because of the way I make a living here on YouTube and in other places. I'm always trying to figure out like what's the optimum way to get an idea out of my brain into someone else's brain so that it sticks. And you can do it with video, but the science suggests that it's not the optimum way. Don't stop watching my videos, but what you should be doing all as well is uh, working through the subjects yourself, like working through problems and, and things. So I'm really happy that the sponsor of this video is brilliant.org. So it's a problem solving website. It helps you to think like a scientist, to think like a mathematician and it, like it's crazy effective. So you work through these puzzles and problems and it just sticks in your brain. Like if you're interested in waves, for example, because you've been watching this video, just search for waves and it'll throw up loads of puzzles, problems, courses that you can work through and you'll really understand the subject because you did it yourself. Um, or the physics of every day, that's a course that you might like if you like my videos. Tell you what though, what I really recommend, recommend? What I really recommend is the one that I've been doing at the moment. It's the joy of problem solving. It's so fun. It's like logic puzzles, geometry puzzles. Check it out for free. Go to brilliant.org forward slash Steve Mould. Link also in the description. It really helps me if you use that link because they know that I sent you. But also as a bonus, the first 200 people to sign up using that link will get 20% off premium annual membership if they choose to upgrade. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to hug a dig dig and click on the notification bell as well and I'll see you next time.